This is Business Live from BBC News with Susanna Streeter and Caroline Hepker. The scandal-ridden German carmaker Volkswagen will name a new chief executive in just a few hours' time, with a difficult road ahead to turn the company's fading fortunes. Live from London, that's our top story on Friday the 25th of September. A company veteran, Matthias Müller, is tipped to take the top job, but is an insider the way to go? And how is these two Picasso paintings are causing quite the controversy? We'll tell you why later in the programme. Well, we'll be sifting through the highs and lows of a really busy week, including the ins and outs of President Xi Jinping's visit to the US with our economics correspondent, Andrew Walker. And of course, you can always stay in touch with us on social media. Just use the hashtag BBCBizLive. Today, we want to know, do you think the new VW boss should be a company insider or would some new blood be better? Hello and a warm welcome to the programme. Now we start with the German car giant Volkswagen. Revelations that VW has been cheating diesel emissions tests in the US have already cost the chief executive Martin Winterkorn his job. More high-profile sackings are expected today and in a few hours' time, Volkswagen's board will name a successor. Well, here's the man widely tipped to take over. Matthias Müller is currently the head of Porsche, the sports car brand owned by VW. He'll have an enormous job in his hands with now VW facing a wave of US criminal investigations and lawsuits. And VW has now admitted that cars in Europe also carried software designed to manipulate emissions testing. And in Germany, the country said it would be checking cars made by other manufacturers. Well, to give you an idea of just how big this could be in the US, diesel cars make up less than 3% of the car market. But here in Europe, half of all cars sold are diesel powered. Thanks, Susanna. Well, Theo Leggett, our correspondent, joins us live from VW's headquarters in Wolfsburg. Theo, thanks uh, for speaking to us this morning. There you are. Uh, it, the atmosphere must be really, really difficult in Wolfsburg, which is a town entirely dependent on VW. What are we expecting the company to say in their press conference? And what about the new chief executive? How can he possibly turn this around? Well, I was reading the German papers this morning and one of the headlines was name Matthias Müller Mission Rescue Volkswagen. And I think that's the point. At the moment, it is looking a little bit mission impossible. Um, this is a company which is going through tremendous upheaval, one of the biggest scandals in its near 80 year history. It's facing, as you mentioned, lawsuits in the United States, potential fines from regulators that could run into billions of dollars, um, potential criminal prosecution, you name it. We should learn today a little bit more about just what cars and where, which models, where they were sold, were equipped with this de defeat device, the software that enabled them to pass emissions tests while polluting more heavily on the road. And we should get the anointment of Matthias Müller. So on the one hand, Volkswagen will be telling us a bit more about just how big the scandal is. And on the other hand, we'll get to see the man who's widely tipped to take over. Now, Theo, one question that I think a lot of drivers want to understand, a lot of car buyers, why is it so difficult to make a clean diesel engine? You know, what is the trouble with that, given that they're, they're obviously better to run and a lot of Europeans buy them? Well, diesels are in some ways fundamentally dirty. They pump out a lot of nitrogen oxides, um, which are compounds that can aggravate lung conditions. They're associated with a lot of deaths every year. They also pump out particulates, which are bits of soot. So companies have been trying very hard to clean those engines up. The problem is, if you reduce the amount of nitrogen oxide you're pumping out, you increase the amount of carbon dioxide. And of course, the pressure is on to reduce carbon dioxide emissions as well. So it's been a conundrum for car makers. Now, what Volkswagen appears to have done, certainly in the United States, is enabled cars to get through increasingly stringent emissions testing while allowing them to run on the road in a different condition that allowed them to reduce fuel consumption, reduce running costs and increase performance. 
Theo Leggett joining us from Wolfsburg covering the VW story. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Well, I think we can find out uh, more details from Chris Carroll from the BEUC, the European Consumer Organization. Chris, we've had some numbers out again, a new report from the International Council on Clean Transportation, which first came out um, uh, with uh, these findings about Volkswagen. It says that carbon dioxide emissions in European road tests are on average 40% uh, more than the official laboratory results. Does that surprise you? Not at all. We've known about these kind of uh, results for some time now. Since 2001, the difference between the official laboratory uh, test results and what is achieved on the road was approximately 8%. And yes, now we're hearing today that the difference is as much as 40%. You know, our members across Europe have been conducting tests on cars. Our UK member, which has conducted research over recent years, and they've never been able to get anywhere near what the car manufacturers are proposing. So what we need to know right now from Volkswagen and other car manufacturers is, is not only um, which cars are being, uh, have been installed with these devices to try and influence the air pollutant emissions tests, but we also need to know whether these devices are being used in fuel consumption testing as well, because arguably that's an even more important criteria for consumers in the buying process of a vehicle. Absolutely. Where does this leave consumers now? How are they meant to choose a greener vehicle? Well, indeed, you know, before we go any further, we need, we need answers from Volkswagen and we need assurances that they're going to implement devices that keep cars uh, clean. And we also need insurances from regulators at the European level and member state level that they're going to get serious about testing. Because if we don't have reliable information about the fuel consumption performance and the air pollutant performance of the vehicles, then consumers are never going to be able to adequately uh, differentiate between one vehicle and another because they're never going to be assured about the, 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 the honesty of the figures that they're being provided. Okay, Chris Carroll from the European Consumer Organization, the BEUC. Thank you very much for talking to us.